All right, today uh, I'm going to focus on number theory. Uh, usually there are more problems there, you know, so that's why we have to spend more time on the numbers. Right. Uh, first topic about so-called terminating zeros of a number. Okay, terminating zeros. So for example, uh, let me check. For example, uh, you have in a four, one, zero, zero, and those two we call terminating zeros, okay? So that's the definition of terminating zeros. And uh, sometimes we are given a product of several integers, and we want to know how many, if we multiply them out, sometimes it's impossible, we want to know how many terminating zeros as the integer, yeah, okay. So uh, the first problem, for example, we want to know how many uh, terminating zeros does the following integer have? 80 to the power six times 75 to this power, to the power eight. Okay, does this one have? Okay, that's the first question. So in order to answer this question, okay, solve this problem, we want to know what kind of factors that when they multiply it out, you can get a zero, okay, a terminated zero, okay? So only two digits, okay, two times five, and okay, you get 10, so you get one terminated zero. Okay, so, uh, so the, the, the idea is that we, we get a prime factorization of 80. We also should, yeah, then we're trying to find the prime, prime factorization of 75. And then when multiply them out, okay, you get prime factorization of this product of these numbers. And then we can figure out how many terminating zeros we can have, okay? So 80 is going to be 8 times 10, right? So 8 is 2 cubed, 10 is 2 times 5. So you get 2 to the fourth power and the fifth to the one power, okay? And then 75 is going to be 3 times by 25. So 25 is a 5 squared, okay? So now let's take a look at this product. Okay, first you get two to the fourth power and five and to the 16. Okay, then we have three times five square to this power. Okay. Let's multiply this up. So we do have, uh, then we can get the prime factorization. Four times 16, yeah, four times 16, right? So you get, yeah, four times 16. Okay, and here five times to the power 16, and three to the power six, and the two to the power 16. All right, uh, five, yeah, five. Okay, because two times eight is five. Then let's, let's group them together. This is 64, right? 16 times four is 64. Okay, and then three to the, power eight, and 15 is 32. Okay, now, in order to get one terminating zero, okay, the point you have, a, you must have a two and a five, okay? So there are more twos than five here. So you don't worry about them, the fact of two. All you need to do is how many five there. So you can you can uh, you can you can separate them in the five to the eight, right? And here's two to the five, two times five to the thirty-two. So here you get a ten, okay? So uh, you get ten to the power of thirty-two. So there are thirty-two terminating zeros, okay? Two to the third power of thirty-two and three to the power of eight. When you multiply them out, you never you don't get any terminate zeros. So 
So two million zeros coming from here. So that's why it has 32 terminating zeros. Okay. Uh, our next question is, okay, our next question is, how many, uh, yeah, how many uh, terminating zeros does this number have, okay? For example, 40 bacteria. Okay, 40 bacteria. Okay, 40 bacteria. And, uh, you know, we don't need to find a prime factorization in order to answer this question. Prime factorization is 40 because 40 bacteria is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, right? And and keep agree all the way to 40. Okay. And the prime factor, this is not prime factorization, this is just product of a, of a, of a, of a sequence of numbers. Okay. So now if you are able to find something, something here, multiply by two to the sum power and five to the sum power k cube then you probably can figure out how many terminating zeros there. But usually here, P is definitely greater than Q. Why? Because there are almost every, you know, every other, okay, almost every other uh, integer, all the even, the, how many even numbers there? 20, okay? 20 even numbers. So there are at least, the, you know, the power P, it at least is greater than or equal to to 20, okay? But as a number of them, yeah, the Q, I think will be less than 20. Let's, can, let's try, you know? Yeah, what kind of integers contains factor 20? A factor is five, right? It's a five. 10 is gonna be two times five. 15 is a three times five. You know, 20 is a four times five, right? That's the first group. And then 25 is five times five, okay? Right, 30 is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, six times five. 35 is seven times five, okay? Okay, that's it. And uh, and 40, right? 40 is eight times five, okay? So, so how many factors does it have, right? Nine, because you have one, 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 two, right? One, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 40 bacteria is gonna be some number times two to the, some power and the five to the power nine. So clearly P is greater than or equal to 20, right? Because they are, there are 20 even numbers and each even number has a factor of two. Okay, P is greater than 20. So therefore it's guaranteed. You, it has a, yeah, has a nine terminating zeros, okay? Yeah, thank you for that. All right, now, uh, the next problem is a little bit challenging, okay? Uh, how many, uh, how many terminating numbers does the following number have? And I want you to do that, okay? How many terminating zeros does the following number have? 125 bacteria. Divide by five bacteria, 120 bacteria. Okay. Okay. 
case, what can this part? Okay. Anyone has answers? Now, how do you deal with the 125 bacteria, right? You cannot, you have, that's too big a number. So let's try to simplify the first. 125 factorial is 120 factorial times 120, 121, 122, not many, 123, 124, right? 124, 125, right? Right? So, uh, no, that's 100, additional to 120 here, so this is, uh, this is, okay. So you have uh, five additional integers here, right? Okay. And the five factor is one times two times three times four times five. Here's 120 factor. So this will be canceled out. Okay. So this must be integer. Okay. This must be integer. Okay. And uh, so let's see. I have a, yeah, I have a two and four here, okay? And then uh, 122, let's see, 122 is 61 times two. This is another even number, 31 times four. So that means, that means uh, two will be gone, four will be also gone. Okay, so you will get 121, 61, 123, uh, 31, and the 125, right? And here's three and the five, okay? And uh, of course, you know, uh, some number, like 121 is divided by three, so don't worry about that. So you will get an integer. But this is a 125 is a five cube, so, what you get here is a sum something and times five and the square because five cubed divided by five is five squared. However, okay, however, there's no factor of two there here, no factor of two. So that means that this five does not meet two, okay? So then you're not going to, they're not going to produce, it does not produce a zero. Terminate zero. So it knows terminate zero. Okay, it has no terminating zeros. Okay, and that's how you, yeah, be careful. You know, even you sometimes you get a factor five, but then this five is pre isolated. There's no factor two there. So that's why you cannot get. Uh, determine. Okay, my next problem is slightly uh, different. Okay, right? so the question is, what is a list positive integer n such that two thousand? And this is a problem in two thousand fourteen mass counts problem. Okay, such that this one does not have a. a uh, terminate zeros, okay? So what is uh, list positive integer n, okay? 
such that this one does not have combination zero. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm missing his n factorial. Okay, that this should be n factorial, not n. Okay. Otherwise, it's it's more complicated. N factorial. Okay. Okay. Well, I got always get the answers from Rebecca. Anyone else? If you have answer, please post them privately. Okay. Uh, okay. So first of all, I got uh, this after simplifies n plus one times n plus two, and here two thousand fourteen. Right, that's a product. So definitely two thousand fourteen is the even number. So this has a factor of two there, right? Right, two something, right? It has a factor of two. Okay. So if, okay, if, if one of these integers divided by five, then it has a factor of five, then five and the two meet and you get the one terminate zero. So this means, in other words, you have to find the n such that no of them is divisible by five, okay? No of them is divisible by five. Right, so in other words, you have to find the n such that no of the, the integers n plus one, n plus two, and 2014 is divisible by five, right? And uh, what is the smallest n you can get? Well, I think n is 2000. Uh, 2010, because 2010 itself, you know, is divisible by five, but the 2011, and it's not divisible by five in the 12, you know, so right? So, so then, uh, then 2014 factorial, 2010 factorial is gonna be 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and no of them is divisible by five. There's no factor five, so that's why you don't get terminator zero, right? All right. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about prime factorization and how do we count the factor. Okay, look. Okay, first of all, let's let's look at this. Okay, let's look at twelve. Yeah, prime factorization. Okay, twelve is going to be four times three, right? Well, right. Four is two two squared times three. So two squared times three is a prime factorization. All the factors here. A prime numbers, two, three, you know, right? Okay. And uh, let's list all the factors that two have, okay? List of factors. So one is a factor of two, right? Then two is a factor of two. Two square is a factor of two. Okay. Then each of this number multiplied by three. So three, two times three, 
to, to square times three. So those are all the factors, okay? Two square times three is 12, that 12 is also a fact of 12. So how many do we have here? There are two times three, okay? Now that two, yeah, this is a two, here's a three. So, so 12 has two times three, which is six factors. Okay. okay. And uh, so we get three is just because the power of two. Okay. So in general, a factor of 12 is written in the form like a two to the P, three to the Q. P is start from zero, one and the two. Q is start from zero and the one. So that's why you have three choices for P and two choices for the Q. And then how many choices for the P and the Q? And the three times two. So there are two, six factors, okay? So that's how do we uh, solve the problem, okay? So now let's take a look at, let's take a look at, uh, yeah, more general name, right? Here's a P and I have, I'm going to use S, Q, and the T, okay? Here, P and the Q are primes, okay? Now, how many, how many, um, how many factors does N, capital N have, right? So let's get the general formula, okay? So a factor, okay, of N must be in the form P to the N and Q to the M. But N is from zero, one, all the way to S. And uh, M is from zero to one, all the way to T. So that means, uh, okay, uh, a fact is completely corresponds to, to a pair of numbers. Okay, there are, there are how many choices for N? S plus one choices. How many choices for M? T plus one choices. So the combination, okay, how many, all the pairs of, of numbers. So clearly, and N has S plus one times T plus one factors, okay? And you can list all of them. Okay, so that's how do we calculate. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's take a look at the following problem. How many, how many uh, factors does the following number have? Now let me give you the number, okay? Let me give you the number. And this number have 144, okay, 144 is a, is a perfect square actually, okay, is a perfect square. So let's see, it's gonna be 12 square. 12 is a two square times three square. So it's two to the fourth power, three square. You get prime factorization immediately. Now, Clearly, based on the above formula, right? It has four plus one is five, and the two plus one is three, so it has a 15 factors. It has 15 factors. All right, my next question is the inverse problem. What is the least positive integer with 
exactly 13 positive uh, factors. So that was a uh... okay. okay, please, please do this problem. Let me know if you have some ideas, okay? I'll get answers. Yeah, you're looking for the list of positive integers with exactly 13 positive factors. If I change 13 to 12, actually the problem is more complicated. That's my. 13 tells us that it's a square number. <sighs> Are you done? Are you yo-yo? Okay, so I did not get any answers from you guys. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so this number that's possible, you know, if the number has a prime factorization, it's possible then P to the R, that's the first choices, okay? In that case, it has R plus one many factors, so that's a number of factors, okay? And then it's possible it's P, R, and Q, S. In this case, you have R plus one and S plus one many factors. Then you probably have to stop here because of P, R, Q, S, maybe I have another one. Uh, I don't have a number here, no H maybe, T. So in that case, you have R plus one, S plus one, T plus one. So clearly those are not the prime numbers, not uh, not a prime, okay, they're not a prime number because, because I at least is one, S at least one, so, so those are the numbers uh, are not the one, right? So that's not prime numbers, it's a product list. So the only possibility, because 13 is a prime number, okay? The only possibility is going to be N must be in the form P to the R, and R plus one is 13, okay? That's the only possibility, okay? This cannot be 13. This cannot be 13 and, and so on because 13 is a prime number, okay? So that means I is gonna be 12. So the number must be in the form N equals P to the 12, okay? Then you have to find out the, small, the list of positive integers. All right, so the answer is MP must be equal to two. So that will be the answer. If you multiply this out, it's gonna be 4,096, okay, is the answer. Okay, that is the answer. You have to choose, uh, you know, for, 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 for P, for any prime number, okay, and, and P to the power 12, Yes, it has 13 factors. 
right? And then, but that's not necessary to be the smallest part of the integer with this property. So you have to choose P, let P to be two, right? right. So this P is a prime number, okay? Right. Okay, our next problem is, what is uh, this time is largest, okay? Six digit number was an other number of positive factors. All right, so other number positive. So you have to look for the largest number, which is largest. It's also must be six digit. Okay, the one we got here above, it's a four digit number, right? Yeah. So you make sure it's a six digit number. And this is as close as to a seven digit number, okay? So you're looking for the N. This should be less than uh, how many zeros do we have? Seven digits, less than six, as close as this number. Okay. But then uh, N has, that's the first property. Second property, N has, uh, N has uh, an odd number, you know, right? The factors, N has K factors, K is going to be other number. Okay. So, how do we solve this problem? All right, let's let's take a look at you know n could be has only one prime factor. Then it has n plus one. Uh, number of uh, factors, right? So this must be an odd by assumption. So that's a possible. And then n equals p s q t. Then s plus one, t plus one. This is must be odd. Now this must be odd. And uh, what you can say that uh, each of the factor must be odd. Right, each of the factor must be odd. Okay, so this implies, uh, so it yeah, this implies s plus one s is even, right? And this implies s is even. T is also even. You know why? Because as a product of set integers. The product integers, if it's odd, then every fact must be odd. Okay, you shouldn't have any even factor there. Because once there is a factor of two, then it's even. That's even, right? So anyway, so it can similarly can true, you know, this is a if a, if we have a three fact prime factors, S, Q, T, uh, R, right? And uh, let's put uh, uh, any other number, you know, I can put the A here, okay? So that means you have an S plus one, T plus one, A plus one. And this is again, it's odd, right? So it means each of them must be odd. And then A, then S, T, A, they must be even, okay? Anyway, so what that tells you, uh, in prime factorization of N, okay? All the powers must be even. So that means N must be a perfect square. Okay, N must be a perfect square. Okay. Because all those powers are even.
Right, so n is a perfect square. Let's call it n squared, right? So far, we only conclude that n is perfect square. Now, this is going to be less than, right? How many zeros, right? So you have a, I already mentioned that, you have a six zeros, right? Okay, so uh, what is that and what is M? When you square, you know, you have to use a, you have to use a, uh, see, this is a perfect square, right? Right, it's going to be 1,000 square, I think, right? 1,000 square, so N is less than 1,000, right? So N is less than 1,000. So what is the largest possible value for n? Well, you can let n to be 999. Okay, try this first. So n is gonna be 999 square. When I multiply this out, uh, that's perfect square, right? So, uh, so just take a look at 99. So what is our requirement? Uh, we want to show it has exactly, uh, it has exactly other number of the other numbers of of a positive factors. Okay. So if you multiply this out, so you get nine nine eight zero zero one. Okay, and does it have a does it have a, a other number of factors? Because 999 is three cubed times 37 and the square. So get three to the power six and 37 square. Okay. And I think this is indeed a, a answers because, because it has seven times three, 21 factors, okay? So that means a requirement. You know, sometimes you're not lucky, then you choose, a, you look at when n is 998, right? 998, maybe the works, okay? So, so but this time we're lucky 999 is divisible by nine, then again, divisible by three, and then after you, divided by uh, uh, nine divided by three, you, you end up with 37. So, you know, that's why, how do you get, yeah, how do you get fact? So first of all, you divide by nine and then get the one, one, one. And the 111, some of you already know that, right? This is divided by three. So you multiply three is n times 37, okay? Then 37 clearly is prime number, so we stop it. That's how do you fact it quickly. Right. right, that's a good question, you know. Yeah, but first of all, you, you figured out it's a, it's a perfect square. Right. Otherwise, it's, it's a difficult to prove, to solve the problem. Okay, right. so if A and B are positive integer, okay, and such that, A factorial plus B factorial equals A plus B factorial. Okay. What is the value of A plus B? At least do this part. And we're trying to find the solutions. Uh, what kind of solutions? Right, so first of all, you look at this, okay? 
is it does it have a special solution now when you see a problem like that more likely you are going to get a unique answer okay so because otherwise they the question would be like what are the possible values of a plus b but here's the 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 guy who gave this problem on the test is sure it has one <laughs> unique value okay but still possible a b cannot be in each individual is determined by a plus b is a constant is the same time. Yeah, you can make, make a simple observation. Like, I think, yeah, so note that one factorial plus one factorial equals two. Okay, that's equals one plus one factorial. So you solve the problem. So the answer is, and uh, and uh, and the one plus one, which is two. Are there other possible solutions? Uh, for A and B, it's possible, but then you will get different values. But the question itself looks like you only get a unique solution. So if you don't have a time, then you just move on to the next problem. But if it's a three minute problem, you probably have to, uh, you have to, yeah, you probably have to give a proof why there's no other solution, okay? So A and B are equal position, okay? So we may assume A is smaller. So if A is smaller, yeah, then A factorial is A plus B factorial minus B factorial. So A plus B factorial, A plus B greater than B. So that's why it's going to be, you know, B factorial times B plus one, B plus two, all the way B plus A, right? Minus B factorial. So you take the B factorial out. So you will get the B plus one, B plus two, B plus A minus one. How many terms here? You have eight terms. Okay, not too bad. But things already we know that this is going to be less than or equal to B factorial because A is less than B. So that means Aha, uh -huh. so that means, what do you get? That means this integer here, okay, b plus one, b plus two, b plus a minus one must be equal to one. Okay, this is a positive integer, but it should have to be one because otherwise it's not gonna be less than b factorial. Then from here, uh, it's clear that and I think it's obvious A must be equal B must be equal to one. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. The reason is uh, this holds that means means A factor is equal to B factor. Okay. I think A equals B. Then I think that's easy to check. A, B must be equal to one. So I skip a little bit here, okay? So you think about why this must be equal to one, okay? Otherwise, each of those numbers is going to be bigger than, you see, suppose A is uh, larger than two, larger than or equal to two, then you have to at least have two terms here, okay? Since B is always part greater than one, so it's clear that if, if A is greater than or equal to two, what happens, right? You need know, step by step, right? So B plus one, B plus A minus one is greater than or equal to B plus one, B plus two minus one, right? You don't even have so many terms because A is greater than or equal to. And then because B is greater than one, right? So it's gonna be one plus one, one plus two minus one, okay? So two times three, six, and they're greater than five. That's, uh, that's a wrong, 
Okay, we know this must be equal to one. So that's why you conclude A is one, then A is one, then B must be equal to one, two. Okay. Okay, B must be equal to one. Okay, so that you conclude that A must be equal to one. And then, then B must be equal to one, quite quickly. All right. Now let's take a look at uh, the reciprocals. Right. Reciprocal, yeah, we are con yeah, consider uh, uh, the number like reciprocal of an integer, okay? And my question is, okay, when it has a terminate decimal, can terminate the, the, and when it this the you know repeating digits, right? So we have a, sometimes have a terminate terminating digit, okay? It's a one over two is going to be zero pi five. So this one only has finite many digits, okay? However, when three is 0 0.333, it's never finished. So this one does not have a, this does, yeah, this, this is a repeating, with repeating digits, okay? It's denoted by three bar. And then, And uh, and uh, according to the theory of mathematics, every fraction is either has a finite many digits in the, in the decimal form, or has infinite many digits but is repeating. Right? So to check that, like one over seven, I don't think it has a finite many. Digits, but what happens when you multiply the cell using super uh, compute? Right, you will get one two eight five seven one and one two uh, one fourth and two eight five seven one. It's repeating, so you have a uh, you you do have a bigger number. This uh, yeah. So every six, how many? Is, one, four, two, eight, five, seven. One, four, two, it's a six, right? So the six digits are repeating, right? Okay. So my question is, what is the uh, greatest number of digits in the repeating part of the following uh, Decimal representation of the numbers. Okay, so we have a lot of numbers. Uh, four, of, four of five. Now this, I'm going to only put, yeah, four of five. Five of six, six of seven, seven of eight, eight of nine, nine of 10, 11, and 10 of 11, and 11 of 12, and 12 of 13, 13 of 14, 14 of 15. Okay. Yeah, we have to quickly dis determine. 
the number of the number of the digits in the repeating part. All right. As I said that, we do see one over seven, you get six digits. Okay, so you multiply by six. Yeah, this is probably a good candidate. Okay. Um, it only works for the first five numbers, but once it goes over to six, it doesn't work. Really? Yeah. Well, I think you have to use a calculator for this problem. So you, you look at the first few of them, you know, and this like six over seven, 0 0.857142, that's repeating, okay? This is because of one over seven, it has a six digits in the repeating part. Okay. And uh, the next one actually will be one over 13, that's multiplied by 12, I got 0 0.9230476, okay? And the others are much shorter, okay? So 13 divided by, for example, 14, uh, 13 divided by 14. Okay, what are we gonna do? The greatest number of the digits in the repeating part, okay? Okay, so like 13 uh, of 14, 0 0.9285, Seven one four two eight five seven one four. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this, right? So uh, it's supposed to be repeating, right? Someone, and uh, I think uh, begin with two, two eight five seven one four, two eight five seven one four. So it also has six. Okay, nine is not there. So the answer is six. You can check that, okay? The answer is you have to quickly check each of them. And uh, and uh, that's what I got, okay? So the first digit, first digit nine is not, is not in the repeating pattern. I, uh, finally, I want to talk about uh, Finally, I want to talk about uh, the the base P system. Okay, we did a similar problem before, but let's try and do it. Okay, so base P representation of a number, okay? What does it mean? So if you are able to express the number in the form like this, a some integer, okay, k, p to the power k. And then the next one is k, uh, p to the power p minus one. And a to the one times p and a, okay? So where, a i are integers from zero to uh, less than p, okay? Then this number can be simply written as a k and a k minus one, all the way a one, a zero, then I put p here. So that's called the p representation of the number. For example, okay, for example, uh, the number three times uh, five square plus two times five plus uh, plus three, okay? Or plus four, doesn't matter, okay? So this number, you can multiply that out. This number is going to be, if you're in the base 10 system, right? It's going to be three times 25 plus 10, right? Plus four. So this is a number 89. Okay, but also this number is written in this form. 
So you just need to collect this coefficient, three, two, four, and put the little five here. That's called a base five representation of 49. Is, is a base five representation of 89, okay? Now, uh, how about, yeah. About uh, 89, we can also. Uh, here's a question. Okay. Here's a question. Uh, what is 1115 minus 1114 as a base 10 number? Okay. So we got two numbers. It's coming from different base system. So first of all, you have to look at this by definition. It's a one times five squared plus uh, plus one times five plus one. So twenty-five plus six is thirty-one. That's a number in base ten. Uh, uh, this is this is base 10 number. 111 to fourth power by definition is one to the fourth square. One times four plus one. Now 16 plus four, 20 is 21. Okay, so the difference that is gonna be 31 minus 21 is gonna be is gonna be 10. Now I can also express 10 in another. Uh, in a computer, you know, it's, uh, uh, all the numbers are in the base two uh, uh, form, right? base two uh, representation, all the numbers are. So 10 is going to be two times five, okay? Two, uh, five is going to be two times two plus one. So, and I end up with two cubed plus two to the power one, right? And I can also return so one times two cubed and zero times two square, and one times two to the one, and a zero, okay? So I'm going to collect all the coefficients, okay? This one, yeah, this is the coefficient with a different color, okay? So there, let's get one zero, one zero, but that's the base two, okay? So for computer, how to memorize uh, this number 10, I store this data and the computer can only tell on and off. On means when, off means zero, you know, right? You, you can, yeah, represent zero. So that means to the computer and in order to store this number 10, okay, understand that, let's just say on, off, on, off, okay? That means it's number 10. It's interesting, right? So. So you can convert it to a different numbers. Now you can also uh, convert it to uh, base, base three, right? So 10, if I divide by three, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, nine plus one, right? Nine is a three times three plus one, okay? So that means, okay? It's pass right, so it's actually is going to be three square plus one, so it's one times three square plus zero times three plus one, so you get one zero one. So the same number in base three system, it's written in one uh, one. All right. You can continue, you know, increase the the value of the base. You can also try. How about, uh, how about uh, six? Oh, how about the seven, right? Seven, seven plus three. So it's a, it's a one times seven to the power and three. So actually it's going to be one three with the base with seven. So the same number now in the base, it's a, in the, yeah, the base seven representation is going to be one three, okay? So now you can, uh, you can, uh, can fly through the all different uh, system, yeah, uh, base P systems. 
Okay. And um, on, on the earth, we human being has 10 fingers, right? So that's why we have a, we, we create, you know, it's a five plus five, right? And uh, so we have a, a, well, I draw the a different. Okay, so that's why I have a five plus five, we use a 10. So we use traditionally, we, we have to create 10 digits and then use those 10 digits to represent all the numbers in the base 10 system. Now, imagine for some reason, you know, we do have animals and we have three fingers, right? So in case our human being born to be, have a six fingers on each side, and I'm pretty sure right now we only need a six digits and uh, we name all our numbers using, uh, yeah, in the, we call the so-called base six system, okay? Base six representation, okay? And, uh, and that's a, yeah. Have you seen a person with a six digit uh, instead of five, six fingers? I remember when I was a child, I saw several of them. They have a six, at least a one hand is a six uh, fing uh, figures. Okay, and uh, so that's possible, you know. Okay. So that's why we have a, you have to create the 10 digits, right? So in order to uh, represent a um, uh, uh, number in, in base 10 system. So one, two, so these are the simplest one, right? All the way to nine. But you can also repress the symbols by different uh, notation. You know, you can, uh, then uh, you can, you can write the numbers using uh, different digits. For example, you, if you let, if you let uh, this to represent a zero, if you let this to be represent a one, if you let this to represent a two, then, you know, if it's a base two, uh, let's say base three, right? So one or one, okay? This number is simply right like this number, okay? So that means, uh, that means 10, okay? So when you read uh, some, uh, uh, some numbers in, uh, in very ancient language, you probably see some symbols like that. Maybe you should link to <laughs> representations of the number, okay? So, so you, it's not necessarily use of one and zero to represent the number in base three system. You can use other symbols, okay? Uh, great, so let's stop here.